The symptoms of pollen food syndrome are usually in the mouth and the throat or the lips or in the ears or potentially on the hands if um, the, the individual has touched the food that they are allergic to. They usually cause immediate reactions. So as soon as the food touches the lips, they can uh, develop these types of issues with itching, mild swelling or uh, irritation or tickly uh, feeling in the throat. The most important thing to note is that most of the time these symptoms do not progress to more severe symptoms. So anaphylaxis is much less common in people who have pollen food syndrome because it's deemed to be a secondary allergy and re is related predominantly to tree, grass or wheat pollen allergy, which then uh, leads to this secondary food allergy because of similarities between the proteins in the pollens and the proteins within those types of foods. So things like wheeze, things like vomiting and diarrhea, things like difficulty breathing, things like feeling very dizzy or uh, collapsing are very rare in pollen food syndrome. However, there are some episodes of anaphylaxis described with pollen food syndrome, usually when a very potent concentrated form of that food is had, for example, in a smoothie or a juice where multiple raw fruits or vegetables that the individual is allergic to have been combined or in some nutritional supplements, for example, with highly concentrated forms of pea or soy protein if the individual is allergic to those with pollen food syndrome. And the reason for that is that when you eat these foods, usually the acid in the stomach is able to break down the proteins that are causing the allergic reaction. And so that doesn't then lead to more severe symptoms. However, if you have a very highly concentrated large dose of the food, then there's not enough time for the acid to break down those proteins, and that's what can lead to more severe symptoms. Pollen food syndrome occurs once you have developed a pollen allergy. So it is secondary to developing an allergy to either tree pollen, grass pollen, or weed pollen. Therefore, it is more common in adults but children uh, are affected and teenagers are particularly affected. So you can develop more pollen food syndrome with more pollen allergies that you develop. And this can progress over time to include more and more of the raw fruits or vegetables um, or uh, nuts that can cause some of these symptoms. Pollen food syndrome natural history is really interesting in that it hasn't been fully investigated, but in my clinical practice, what I find is that some people say that over time, they have less issues with pollen food syndrome as their pollen allergy also wanes. But some people unfortunately find that the pollen food syndrome becomes worse over time in that more and more foods are affected, which means that they need to avoid more and more uh, raw fruits and vegetables. Pollen food syndrome is diagnosed firstly with an allergy focused history. So people who have pollen food syndrome usually describe the typical symptoms with the typical foods such as raw fruits and vegetables. They often say that they were able to tolerate those foods when they were younger, and then they've started to develop symptoms since then. And they usually always have a history of symptoms around pollens or at least positive allergy tests to tree pollens, grass pollens or weed pollens. Now, in terms of what we can do for um, allergy testing, we can do skin prick tests and we can do specific blood tests, which can differentiate between what we call a true allergy or a primary allergy or pollen food syndrome, which is considered a secondary allergy because it comes after the pollen allergy develops. For this, what we often do is we use both uh, fresh, raw forms of the food 
and cooked forms of the food for skin prick testing, because usually people who have pollen food syndrome are able to tolerate the cooked form of the food or highly processed forms such as in canned goods. We can do skin prick testing to this to look at the difference between the raw and process skin prick tests, but also there are much more sophisticated blood tests now that are able to look at the food, for example, peanut, and see which parts of the peanut are related to primary food allergy to peanut. So certain proteins reflect primary, more uh, severe allergy to peanut, versus other proteins which are related predominantly to birch pollen, which are likely to indicate a secondary allergy to peanut, uh, indicating pollen food syndrome. Pollen food syndrome does not always require treatment because often the symptoms that people get are very mild. People can find sometimes that during the pollen season that is related to their pollen food syndrome, their symptoms can be more pronounced. A lot of the time, these symptoms can be avoided by processing the food, such as cooking the apples, or sometimes peeling the food will be enough to reduce symptoms enough for the individual to tolerate that food. If uh, an individual does develop some itching in the mouth, the first thing to do would be to stop eating that food and then having a drink of water or rinsing out the mouth may be helpful. If the symptoms continue despite this, then usually a, a non-sedating antihistamine would be uh, helpful in reducing those symptoms.